um, which ensures they get what they need. So, uh, Madam Chair, um, I commend this. I call Maureen Pugh. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I stand tonight um, to speak to the Social Security Legislation Rewrite Bill in its second reading here tonight. And there's no question that this is an extremely huge piece of work. And in fact, the original, the Social Security Act of 1964, has been very overdue for this overhaul. But it was such a, an enormous task that it had been filed away into the too hard basket. So who was it that took the initiative to make the legislation clearer, more user-friendly and appropriate for the 21st century? The former national-led government, of course. This, this bill is simply about making the law clear, about updating the language so that it is fit for Im implementation in the modern world. Madam Speaker, the Social Security Legislation Rewrite Bill will repeal the Social Security Act of 1964 and the Social Welfare Reciprocity Agreements and New Zealand Artificial Limb Service of the, uh, Act of 1990. And it does provide consistency and the clarity across all of those acts. So, Madam Speaker, I support this bill in its current form, but what I do not support is this. So earlier today in this House, I heard a very passionate speech from a Green member and who insisted that that government believes in this process. It believes in the Select Committee and it believes in the right of the public to be able to have its say. Yet this afternoon, we received this and we have only had time to print it and bind it before the second reading happened in this House today. So what we've got here is a 501-page rewrite of a rewrite. So today, Madam Speaker, there was no time for the public to scrutinise this bill because we have short-circuited the committee stage and now the public's opportunity to speak to these changes in this SOP is gone. And I think it's disingenuous of this government to dump a document of this magnitude, and it does propose changes to the original bill after the public has made its, cha um, made its submissions. So, Mad uh, Madam Speaker, there were concerns with this SOP and the original bill, and they were raised by the Regulations Review Committee. And there were three regulation-making powers that were highlighted that provide for the making of regulations to identify persons or benefits that are exempt from requirements set out in the bill. And the committee was the Regs Review Committee was really clear about the fact that they should set out clear purposes for the granting of exemptions. They should set out clear criteria for the granting of exemptions. Be consistent. They should give good reasons to state them in the exemptions instrument itself and should expire within five years and should contain sunset clauses to that effect. But, but Madam Speaker, we don't know if those issues have been dealt with in, the, in this SOP because there's simply no time to scrutinise it. There was um, no explanation for the purpose of these exemptions, no criteria um, included, no requirement to give reasons for the exemptions and no time limit on the regulations made after this clause. So, Madam Speaker, there is a lot of work still to be done, and especially now that this SOP has been dumped on us today, I say that um, this process has done the public no service at all. And I thank the Regulations Review Committee for their feedback, and it's signed by the illustrious Andrew Bailey. Oh, what a man. What a guy. I call Priyanka Radhakrishna. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It is indeed an honour to stand and take a call um, on the.